Science webinar. Um, I'm going to give, you know, students maybe another minute or so to log on and then we'll kind of get started. Uh, if you can see, um, I believe it's on the right hand side, there's a little chat box. Um, I'll mention this again in a little bit, but if you have any questions that you would like to ask any of these students or the Dean of Behavioral and, and Natural Science, Dr. Gritsky, feel free to put that in our chat box, okay? All right. Okay, I'm gonna get started um, in like 30, 30-ish 30 seconds. Hopefully, if you're also, if you're having any um, issues with YouTube uh, technology-wise, please put that in the chat box as well, just so we can be aware of that. Uh, that's also super helpful to our panelists and people on the back end that are making this happen. All right, okay, so we're gonna get started. Thank you everyone for tuning in. My name is Taylor Murphy. I am an admission counselor um, at Mount St. Joseph University and we are joined by um, you know, a bunch of MSJ students and the Dean of Behavioral and Natural Science. I'll let them all introduce themselves in a second. Um, but what we're gonna do here is we, we have some questions. Um, you could have some questions about behavioral and natural sciences um, as a school. And we're here to hopefully answer those questions and give you some more information. All right, so I'm gonna kick this off by having Dr. Gene Kritsky introduce himself. Um, do you wanna go ahead, Dr. Kritsky? Certainly, thank you. I appreciate the uh, opportunity to be here, Taylor, and uh, join my, my students in my school. I'm Dr. Kritsky, I'm the Dean of Behavioral and Natural Sciences. I'm also the longest serving full-time faculty member here at Mount St. Joe. I've been here now 38 years, so I know a lot of stuff about this institution. I am a PhD in entomology. Uh, if you don't know what that is, I'm going to tell you, but note that people pay tuition for this information and you're going to get this free today. <laughs> I, I study insects. In particular, I study things like the periodical cicada that you see behind me. I'm a former Fulbright scholar to Egypt and I uh, have uh, written uh, 10 books and have published about 246 papers uh, as part of my work. I was chair of biology for 19 years and I was also chair of physical therapy uh, and got them accredited back in uh, uh, 2001. Awesome. Dr. Kritzi is being very modest right now. We could spend this whole webinar, this full 30 minutes talking about all his accomplishments. Um, so if you have more questions about it and everything, you know, that he's done, feel free to put that in the chat too. Um, so I'm going to introduce now the MSJ students and have them, you know, give you a little information on themselves, their major, what year they are. Um, and we'll start with Amber. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Amber Reinert. I'm a junior psychology major. And um, I knew I wanted to go into a helping profession. So um, psychology seemed like the right major for me um, when I found myself curious about like wanting to know why people like do the things that they do and how they think. And when I first came to the Mount and I took um, lifespan development with Dr. Fleming, I knew for sure that that was like the right major for me. Nice, thank you. All right, Hannah, you wanna talk about yourself and introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Hannah Driscoll. I'm a senior psychology and fine arts major. Um, I also have a minor in history that I added onto there. Um, but I um, will be finishing my coursework at Mount St. Joseph University this year, and I'm going to plan to go to doc um, to get my doctorate or um, my master's in clinical psychology. I want to work with children. Um, the reason I did art and psychology was so that I had um, different outlets to speak with my clients in the future. Um, so that was a really big part of that. Nice. Thank you. Okay. And last but not least, Tiana, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Tiana Jordan. I'm a junior biology major. Uh, I was a biochem major, but now I'm just biology. Um, I'm studying biology in hopes of becoming a um, a uh, genetic counselor so you know I can help children and families who have loved ones with genetic disorders such as my own. Awesome okay and we'll get to you know talk more about you know why all these students love what they do and why they chose their major but first um, I'm going to have Dr. Kritsky just kind of list off some of the majors within the School of Behavioral and Natural Sciences. Uh, thank you Taylor. Uh Behavioral and Natural Sciences is one of the largest schools on campus. 
Uh, in addition, to, uh, we're, we, we have a wide range of degree programs, but our departments include biology, chemistry, mathematics, computer science, psychology, sociology, social work, criminology and criminal justice. Uh, and uh, we do offer courses that lead to pre-law. Uh, and so, uh, uh, as you can imagine, this is a rather diverse group of, uh, of faculty. We offer degrees in, in biology and in biomedical sciences, biochemistry, uh, straight chemistry, mathematics. A new degree that we started this year uh, is from uh, is part of the Choose Ohio First program is called Natural Language Processing. And if you have an interest in uh, uh, getting a double major and adding some really cool technology, if you've ever used Rotten Tomatoes to look at movie reviews and you see the little chart down there with the Rotten Tomatoes and some percentage, that's involving natural language processing where you computers learn languages and then decide is that a positive thing being said or a negative thing being said? Or if you've ever called, let's say the Apple store and it says, you get this automated voice, please tell me what you're calling about so we can better direct your call. That's using the spoken word to analyze language. That's now a new major here at Mount St. Joe. So we're really on the cutting edge. We're the first in Southwest Ohio to have that. Uh, in our, uh, uh, our computer science degree is, uh, uh, also has a track that's in straight programming and security. Psychology, as you, we got two of our, our great psychology majors here today. Uh, and uh, uh, that is a, a psychology program, which I find second to none. It, it, it specializes and focuses on research. And, and uh, I think uh, you, I see the heads shaking, yes, but the, the, each of the students do a research project. And many of the students go in to present that at, at regional psychology meetings. The same is true about biology. Uh, uh, Tiana is gonna have this opportunity to do a research project and uh, in biology, working with one of the faculty. Uh, she want, uh, you wanna be a, as I said, call a genetic counselor. And we, you, uh, yeah. we have, our alums are practicing genetic counseling. We've had a few go through the programs. Uh, you, there are lots of opportunities for research in that area. Uh, the, uh, our students in biology compete with tri at Tri Beta, that's the National Honors Biological Society, where students present research papers in competition with other universities and schools. And uh, I'll tell you, it, uh, it's, it's really fun to go to these competitions. And it's not just the athletes that get to get win awards, but our students coming back with awards, uh, having beaten out some of our sister institutions all in the region. I don't want to name names, but uh, we, we really enjoy that. It's all the good fun. Uh, we also have degrees in criminology. I've got, I've got students working at, for example, uh, at Procter & Gamble. We have so many Procter & Gamble employees from our biology, chemistry, and psychology. The psychology is involved with how do you present marketing information and what have you. Uh, we have so many uh, alums over at P&G that we can have our own alumni club, Procter & Gamble. Uh, so, and I could go on, but I'll, uh, uh, but those will give you a, a feel for some of the diverse things we've got going. I've got uh, students who started out uh, in biology who ended up getting their degree in criminology. And now, uh, and this young lady's a, a rather small individual in, in height, and now she's carrying a gun and she's a parole officer. <laughs> and so uh, what we try to do in behavioral and natural sciences is, is match what you love to what you want to do. That was very well said. Thank you, Dr. Critzi, for kind of giving us a background of, you know, what majors are within, you know, this school. So now we'll kind of, you've seen it from the faculty side. Let's like talk to the students now. So um, we'll start with you, Hanna. What class or, you know, lab has been the most exciting for you during your years here at the Mount? Uh, that's pretty tough, honestly. <laughs> um, I love psychology, so everything's really great. But I would say that probably the most interesting one was my psychological testing course. Um, so basically, we got to look at different forms of psychological testing. Um, like we, you can learn how to um, test for autism, you can learn how to test for depression, anxiety, things like that. And you can see how it develops from 50 years ago to today, what's changed. Um, and actually we got to learn and use those materials just to look through and flip through because um, our teacher um, worked at Cincinnati Children's. So she was able to bring in resources for us to look at and really get a feel for what we could be doing in the future. Nice. Okay. Well, Tiana, let's, what was your, you know, favorite class or lab um, while you've been here at the Mount? Well, it's, I'm stuck between two. It's either my bio psych course in lab 
or my bio two course in lab. I don't know, those two were just amazing. I love Dr. Duramara. I love Dr. Crow. So I gotta give them both. They both earned the number <laughs> one spot. That's okay. We can definitely, it's a tie. Um, <laughs> okay, and we'll end with you, Amber. Tell us about what was your, you know, favorite or most exciting class? Well, I'd probably have to say uh, counseling theories. I took that this past semester and it was like really interesting to see how different therapists use different models um, to counsel their clients. Um, it was very interesting. Nice. And while we're on this topic, I'll uh, kind of direct this question back to Tiana. Um, can you give our students, you know, an idea of what a lab schedule looks like? You know, how many hours is it? And what does that breakdown look like during the week? Okay, so you'll usually have either a Tuesday lab or a Thursday lab, and you will have a class prior to your lab. So you'll get all the information that you need to know before you even go into the lab. So you'll talk about, you'll go through slides and talk about uh, preparation for specimens you're gonna be cutting open, preparations for mixing different chemicals, PPE that you will need and stuff like that. And then after um, you get done with the lab, then you talk about the, your um, information and research that you found in class, like um, the, next, the next class day. And labs are usually um, one and a half hours um, on, their, on your schedule, they give you a three hour time frame. Sometimes you won't use all the time. Sometimes you will. So it just depends on what you're doing like early on in your year. So like freshman year, the beginning of the year, you won't use all the time. But once you get to the end of the year, you will start to use the whole three hours, especially when you're studying for your practicals or other exams. Perfect. Thank you. Because I know that when you transition, you know, from high school to college, the schedule can look different from than what students are used to. So that perspective is really good. Um, and I'll ask Dr. Kritsky. Um, so what do you think uh, that are some exciting or fun classes that you enjoy teaching that or that we have to offer within the School of Behavioral and Natural Science? Well, uh, from my own courses, uh, <laughs> Todd, I'll start with that. Then I'll go on and comment on some of the others. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy my travel courses. I have taken students to the Galapagos Islands on two occasions. I've taken four groups of students to Egypt. I do a lot of research in uh, beekeeping of ancient Egypt. So we've, we've gone there on four occasions over the last uh, 10 years. Those are a lot of fun. Uh, as dean, I'm not expected to do a lot of teaching, but I refuse to accept that, <laughs> that uh, assumption. I, I teach uh, three classes over a two-year period. Uh, they include uh, uh, entomology, the study of insects. That has a lab with it as well, where you uh, go out and collect insects. We do a lot of uh, uh, field work in that course. I teach a course in evolution. It's one of the few evolution courses in the country that uh, has a formal laboratory. Uh, and... Uh, uh, some of the notable speakers that we've had in the past for my class was Darwin's great-grandson lectured in my class once. Oh, that's kind of exciting. I enjoyed. A course I teach every year is uh, dinosaur biology. It's a non-majors uh, uh, science co uh, a course that satisfies the sci natural science requirement here at the university. Uh, it's basically the study of the biology encoded in, in looking at dinosaurs. Uh, and it's an online class. And uh, uh, I've, uh, that was the first online course ever developed at the university back in 1994. And uh, it then went, uh, accelerated face-to-face -face and the students have since demanded or, or asked for it to be an online opportunity. And so that's offered uh, uh, every spring semester in the first half of the course. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, as far as other courses, uh, uh, Tiana mentioned uh, uh, Bio2 with Dr. Duramaral. Uh, uh, Dr. Duramaral is amazing. And this is one of the things about our labs that I find really, really important and impressive. The faculty teach the labs. We do not have teaching assistants, uh, but the actual faculty who love their discipline, Dr. Duramaral freezes frogs. She freezes them hard as a rock. You can actually hear them knock on the table. Then she thaws them out and brings them back to life. And her students work with her in the summer to help do the study. I might think, what's, what's the point of that? It turns out a lot of the funding for this, this cryobiology is funded by medical science because if we could figure out a way and understand the biochemistry of how tissues freeze. Normally when things freeze, they form little crystals that slice through the tissues. But if we could figure out a way to, to freeze organs like we do with windows to vitrify them, 
we wouldn't have that damage. And we could have heart banks and liver banks and lung banks. And so uh, that research, which is really of interest to all of us that are in that into ecology and behavior has a fundamental bio biomedical application. And that's her research. And she had students working with her for the last couple of years on that project. The same is true with uh, uh, Dr. Murray, our forensic anthropologist. Uh, whenever a, a skeletonized body is found in Cincinnati, it ends up in our laboratory for a few days where Dr. Murray figures out the, the, the sex, the age, possibly the, the cause of death. And uh, one year they, uh, they inadvertent, uh, some people in Newport, Kentucky, inadvertently dug up a part of a cemetery that they didn't know was there. And so we brought into a laboratory several individuals and her specialization is mixed assemblages of bones. So she and three students categorized everything in that cemetery and figured out how many people were there. How do you do that? Well, just look for how many left legs do you have? <laughs> You're not gonna have two of those for a person. So, and uh, so uh, they figured out how many people were in that cemetery. Uh, we even did analysis on the bones. It turns out a lot of them were uh, had lead poisoning, uh, which is not unusual because people would drink out of lay, uh, pewter or lead-based crocks and what have you for drinking material. There was a lot of lead in our windows and our paint. So uh, that's uh, that was not a surprise. Uh, in psychology, I've seen some wonderful research projects looking at what the cause of bias. And I'm sure the students can talk about what their colleagues have talked about. These things are just amazing to watch these students uh, describe how they would go about uh, uh, one involved, uh, as I recall, an individual who was who was made up to look like they would like he or she was homeless. And what's the immediate bias you have when you see an individual like that and, and study what's what's that because that help that would help us deal with with uh, uh, fundamental impressions that people can get. Uh, in uh, sociology, uh, Dr. Uh, Richard Simon and so is an a excellent so uh, sociologist working with population demographics. Uh, and he's working on studies uh, uh, with us that we're proposing right now to look at, uh, and I say us in biology, uh, looking at how students, uh, how well they do uh, as it relates to their high school programs and their high school grades and what have you. How successful can they be? How, is that an indicator of success? And what can we do to, to uh, to provide more opportunities to make sure students are successful. Uh, I could go on all day with this, but uh, uh, I will say the one thing about our faculty, and uh, I, the, 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 I'd like my three of my students to actually comment on this, uh, it's clear that the faculty have fun. And if they're enjoying what they do, and, they, and, and one of the things that uh, uh, Amber mentioned that taking uh, her psychology course with Dr. Fleming made her become wanting to become a psychologist. I had the same effect with my was uh, taking a course in entomology. I knew with an employee I was going to be an entomologist because of the individual's enthusiasm. Dr. His name was Frank Young. His enthusiasm was so infectious. I changed my major and my career goal. And here I am with bugs behind me. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you, Dr. Kritsky, for touching on like some of the awesome, not only research opportunities, but, you know, classes and the perspective of how our faculty, you know, come to care for our students and how we, you know, help them every step of the way. Um, so one question, I guess, um, I'll ask all our students is I'll kind of talk about, you know, have you participated in a co-op? Um, if you have, if you could just touch briefly on what that co-op is, or if you haven't participated in a co-op yet, um, are you planning to go to grad school after the mount? And if you are, you know, where are you thinking of going? What are you thinking of pursuing? Why are you going to grad school? What is the importance of that? Um, I'll start with you, Hana. If you want to go ahead. All right. Um, well, I have done a co-op pretty much every semester, at least once a year at my time at the Mount. Um, I do the summer employment program here at the Mount, um, which I basically work with nonprofit organizations over the summer to get um, experience in my field. Um, so I actually, this past summer, I worked at ICRON in Cincinnati, Ohio, um, and then the summer before that, Cincinnati works. So I actually got to work with populations um, that were economically disadvantaged um, and help them um, reach their goals, um, either by getting a job, looking for housing, fixing up their resumes. Um, and then that actually led into volunteer opportunities to work with their psychologist on site. So um, it's a great networking opportunity, all the co-ops that the Mount offers, which is amazing. Um, and then as far as 
graduate school goes. I think I touched on this earlier, but UC or um, the University of Louisville is probably where I'll be going. Um, and the reason for doing that is because I want to be able to get my licensure in psychology so I can actually work with people. Um, and then eventually I would like to teach as well. So nice. Okay, perfect. You're a good example. You had both. <laughs> okay, so Tiana, do you want to touch base on either of those questions for us? Yes, um, I have not done a co-op yet, but I plan to um, some next summer or going into um, the fall, going into my senior year. Um, and f I do plan on going to grad school. Hopefully, um, I can go to UC, but if not, then I guess IU it is. So explain the importance of like why you need to go to grad school for what you want to do and you know, if you didn't go to grad school, you, I guess, would you say that you wouldn't have as many opportunities? Yes. So for genetic counseling, the um, degree that would like you to have is a master's degree. So with my bachelor's that I would begin from the Mount and just biology, um, I wouldn't qualify to become a genetic counselor. So that's why I'm going to uh, UC in order to um, get into the school of genetics to get certified for the state of Ohio and, you know, take all my courses in order to uh, become a certified genetic counselor there. Nice. Okay. Thank you. And last, Amber, um, you had mentioned earlier when before this that you were going to start a co-op this summer. So if you want to touch base about that and possibly grad school. Definitely. Um, so um, I'm just starting my first co-op with the Cincinnati Recreation Center. And I'll have the position of inclusion assistant. So I'll be working with um, like the different camp groups um, that Cincinnati Recreation has. And I'll be working one-on-one -on -one with one of their campers that either has a physical, de developmental, or behavioral disability. So I'll be helping that camper to get engaged with other campers and to participate in the activities. So that sounds like a lot of fun and really interesting position. And for grad school, I'm thinking of pursuing a doctorate degree in um, clinical psychology after I earned my bachelor's. Nice, okay, awesome. So um, I'll have, this will be my last question for Dr. Kritsky and then, you know, just cause we're getting close to um, reaching our max time. Um, so Dr. Kritsky, if you wanna tell us, since we were just talking about grad school, what do you think, I guess what I'm asking is, Post, you know, the Mount, what are students doing? Um, if you could list places that our students are employed that, you know, are really cool or, you know, where they're going, what grad programs they're getting into and what they're doing education wise to continue past the Mount. Certainly. Uh, it's, it's a wide area, as you can imagine, with all the programs we have. Uh, we have, uh, uh, as I mentioned, students working at uh, Procter & Gamble and they've risen up, uh, risen through the ranks to uh, managers, project managers. Uh, we've got in biology several students working at Q Laboratories. They're, they do microbiology work. So, uh, and and some of the stuff that these micro labs are doing, for example, uh, they'll they'll everybody that has a a salad bar has to have it turn in the samples of their salads. So that'd be tested to make sure they're safe, food products and what have you. And so the uh, and Q Labs is a, an up and coming uh, company. Uh, we've had uh, several people working for Hamilton County, both in the sheriff's office as well as in the coroner's office. Uh, we offer a course in, uh, in uh, forensic science, and uh, uh, we've had uh, uh, this last year, we taught it in conjunction with several, fa several staff members at the uh, Hamilton County Sheriff's Office and Coroner's Office and came in and helped, actually did labs with the, uh, with the students. We've got students who are detectives. We've got students that are actually doing, uh, uh, working with the Coroner's Office on cause of death issues and so on. Uh, we uh, have uh, uh, students working for the Hamilton County uh, Social Services Agencies. Uh, the summer employment that uh, uh, Hannah talked about, uh, uh, that, that program was very important to uh, a number of our social services uh, organizations in town when uh, a levy failed a few years back. And we helped, that actually helped fund a lot of these sources. And uh, uh, these uh, uh, organizations uh, love Mount graduates. Uh, as, uh, we've got students that are teaching mathematics in several schools. I've got several of my former students teaching biology from uh, at a number of high schools. Fairfield is one, for example. Summit Country Day is another. I've had uh, uh, we've got students who went on to graduate school in at, at the University of Cincinnati, obviously, 
Uh, that's close by, but we've had them at Ohio State. Uh, I myself, from my own laboratory, I've got nine PhDs that came out of my laboratory to go get a PhD in entomology. And they went to Kansas State, uh, University of Cincinnati, Notre Dame, uh, Illinois, Florida, uh, Kentucky, uh, Clemson University. I've got, uh, I've got uh, students now that are teaching at, tri at the university level at Tri-C, that's the uh, uh, community college uh, system for the Cleveland area. I've got uh, former students uh, who are teaching at uh, uh, St. Vincent. Uh, she finished her baccalaureate degree here at the Mount, went on to the University of Illinois for a PhD, and is now an assistant professor at uh, a, uh, a Catholic university, a Catholic college in, in Western Pennsylvania. Between the two, she did two things. She was a she was a, a, a postdoctoral researcher at the University of California, Riverside, and then uh, was a policy, uh, Jefferson policy uh, intern at the uh, Entomological Society of America working on Capitol Hill. And uh, for fun, she's a roller derby girl. <laughs> and her, her research is honeybees and her roller derby name is Polly Nator. You can find that on, on YouTube. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Dr. Kritsky, um, for, you know, filling us in on what students are able to do, whether they just get their bachelor's degree or if they continue their education. Um, lastly, I'm going to address this last question to our students, and I just want you to tell, you know, our viewers why you chose them out, how you believe our School of Behavioral and Natural Sciences goes above and beyond, and how, I guess, that has helped you. And I'll start with Amber. So um, when I first toured the mount, I had, like I had that kind of like cliche feeling of like, oh my gosh, like this feels like home, because like it really did. Everyone like at the mount when I toured was so welcoming, and I just felt like part of like this family, like the mount family. Um, and ever since it has felt that way, um, especially like in the um, behavioral sciences, like it's clear that the professors like really care, and that they really want to see you succeed. So I definitely feel like the Mount was like the perfect choice for me. Thank you, Amber. Okay, we're gonna go to Hannah. If you wanna tell us why you chose the Mount. Um, so I actually applied to 11 schools. Um, I got into all 11, but when I toured them, it just wasn't right. Got to the Mount and I said, wow, there's so many opportunities for me to grow here as a person, um, grow in terms of networking, um, and the faculty members, um, they had small classes, so I could really get to know who I was working with. So that was one of the major reasons. And there's just a lot, a lot of opportunities there, especially um, if you are economically disadvantaged, there's a lot of opportunities to get scholarships um, and really finance your education without being a million dollars in debt. <laughs> yeah, that's also a great point to touch on. Um, and I'm gonna have Tiana finish us off, but before I have her start, I just wanna let anyone know that's watching live. Um, if you do have any questions, we will answer them after you know Tiana, we answer this last question with her. Um, please put that in our chat box so we can answer that before we sign off. So I'm gonna let Tiana answer why she chose them out and then we'll address any questions. Okay, um, I chose them out. Actually, it was a last minute decision. Uh, <laughs> It was the last minute decision, but I would not regret it or I would not want to go to any other college. Um, so like I said, I don't regret it at all. And especially being in the uh, like the bi biology department or science department, uh, like Dr. Krisky touched on a lot, it's very diverse. Um, it's very open. The teachers like to have fun in the lectures and lab and they're very inclusive. So it's it's a it was a good choice great choice awesome thank you guys for all you know participating with us and thank you dr kritsky for sharing your knowledge on you know the school and for you guys as students sharing your perspective um i know anyone watching that maybe just wanted a little bit more information on what our school of behavioral natural science or you know mount st joseph as a whole has to offer and i think you guys did a really great job. Um, I'm gonna respect everyone's time. Um, it's four. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining our panelists. Thank you, our viewers, for watching. Um, 
if you have any questions that you guys need answered, please, I'm going to put my contact information. It's 513-244-4646. My name's Taylor and I work in admissions. I can help direct you to anyone that we can get you answered. Thank you guys all. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you.